Ziggity zig back with more tales from the letter, and yes, I realize you probably don't recognize this game because it's been a while since we had a StarCraft game, but really we don't have too many of us any more replays these days, but Bombdegore did send me this replay of a game he played up against Helix over here on a map called Secret Spring. It has been so long that I didn't even know that this was a new map, so if you have a look here, it's a pretty easy expand, uh, uh, defendable expand going up to the immediate side and then your outward expansions are kind of well yeah you can kind of move down and depending on where everybody is and you also got the gold in the middle so it's almost like an old a new fashioned m metalopolis am i saying that right Meta that doesn't sound right i feel like i'm saying it wrong anyway so um we are cheering for the terran in this in this case as opposed to the protoss this seems like an intriguing place to put your first pylon but who am i to judge let's pop up the production tab because i don't know maybe the new meta is to put your um to put your pylon where you have like 60 percent area to actually put any buildings because i mean you can't put one there I mean, look the area surrounding this why don't i get why don't i get that why don't i get that man I still have never figured out how to how to get it so I can see the area of uh, the energy area available to the to the pylon itself. There's some destructible rock well, rock tower. I think that probably turned into the secondary rocks. That would turn into a rock wall if you destroyed the first half of it. But I'm gonna go going for a cross check right away. I think probably you might see my my washer is going crazy. What you say? No, it does seem to be really just two. My last guy unpaused, and I lost my... The last guy unpaused, so he's played multiple games with his washer, with his broken washer? Anyway, Bombadour has noticed where Helix is, or Helix is here, and I do think that it is a cross-spawn only, because it doesn't appear to be a similar kind of expansion. There's this expansion here, which is the 1-2, but these uh, top-bottom ones, they don't seem to have quite the same protection as the uh, as, as these corner ones that our two pl players have started in. There is the barracks, and yeah, it's just, the Helix has decided to stick behind some sort of magical wall. This is, uh, this is a very Zig build, I think, here. Getting all, all six. Um, both guys are with uh, three dudes in it, so getting all six probes into gas collection is the way that that's going to go so if you have a look a quick look at the worker supply it's actually kind of in uh, helix's um advantage at the moment however we're going to see some op mules come down any moment now because i do believe that the orbital command is yeah, merely just starting now um but warp gate is on the way for helix and then uh, Bombadour is moving into a reactor, so probably going to be maybe just a little bit more um, dude heavy is, 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 is the strength there. Trying to see if he can get anything more on the back there. I think he was aiming for, he accidentally hit a second reactor there instead of a tech lab. There's the mothership core is on its way out. No further tech right now for Helix, other than the the warp, uh, warp gate technology. Got a pretty early... Um, stalker. I'm not sure if he's going to be going for any kind of super stalker. Super stalker. No, not really a free stalker rush because Twilight Council is out and there's no further further units. So really, just a stalker and a mothership core are going to have handled some early defense, just like Bomb got here with a little bit of early defense with the Marines. Now, getting the engineering base, we can start working on a few upgrades at the same time. The tech lab is going to be hitting. Uh, probably, um, I would say combat shield or stim, depending on which building we see next. I mean, I would start expecting to see there's a marauder coming out at the same time. Actually, it will tell me, won't it? Oh, it's concussive shells. I am stupid, because there were three options, and I chose the one that Bombadour is not going with, because I do not understand the meta or what's going on. So let's just stick to what is actually happening and not trying to predict what's going to be happening. We have two more gateways on their way down, so three gates total currently for Helix and Helix's base, and a Dark Shrine at the same token, which is kind of hidden way down here. Mm, interesting, because as any scan would still reveal this, so I'm not sure, I think he's just trying to hide that from himself? Perhaps? Uh, not taking the second base, which is intriguing. The robotics facility is getting a lot of buildings off of just one base, hoping to be able to sustain that. No movement, and okay, so four... Four gates, Dark Shrine, and the Robux facility on one base. Here is the initial push by Bombadour, which is going to be a pretty sizable push, but the problem here is that this Mothership Corps is going to be able to send back a number of these units. Oh, he's not moving his way up, but he's going to try to... Ooh, there's a quick little stutter step on the way up. Quick pickoff of the Mothership Corps. I was not expecting that, so it's 
expecting a little bit more damage to be done to these uh, marauders who are not able to shoot up. Not really sure what Bombadour is going to try to focus down here. I would almost want to focus down this one Artosis pylon, which is powering all five of these forward buildings. I'm um, deciding to take down the robotics facility, which is a really sweet idea there. But now, what I think is going to happen, you're going to see three Dark Templar on their way in, and they are, yeah, they are pretty much going to go highly contested up against this. Bombadour could lay down a scan, but uh, probably was not fully watching what was going on there. And there's Heliox with OT, hardy, hardy, hard. You can't get me. I've got Dark Templar saved by the dark, te saved by the timing of the Dark Shrine coming in just at the right time. Now. The problem there, Helix, is that you have not even looked at what your opponent's base is. Because right now, Bombadour is now going to go to the tech lab on the factory. So you thought that it was just going to be that. You're probably looking at the M and M and M coming in, because the second push is usually with the um, medevacs at the same time. Oh, there I go. I'm trying to predict again. And the funny thing there is that we finally do see uh, Bombadour solving... Solving Helix's problem for him, but Helix is probably only getting that robotics facility for the observers, so that is a really expensive set of observers at the moment. Here come some... are those... wait. No, those are actual Zealots. For a second, the, the way that they were done... Oh, it's Zealot Archon! Suddenly, we've morphed over into Zealot Archon. Why would you Archon before getting going? Why wouldn't you not send in your... your Dark Templars? I mean, yeah. Okay. Ah, all right. So it's moving the starport over to the tech lab, possibly for, and only because I know Bombagor, ravens. There's the first raven on its way. Oh man, I love when Bombagor plays ravens. So Bombagor's Terran games are the best Terran games that you usually see because of just the hilaritude of ravens. Both players now working on two bases. Essentially, Bombagor is pulling ahead. In fact, for harvesters, which is kind of impressive because he was some. Um, Actually, a little bit behind. I'm trying to figure out how to get around the supply depot. There's sort of... All right, all right, all right, all right. Stop spinning your fan. Stop spinning your derby fan. Let us out. Let us out, let us out. Not by the hair of my chinny chin. I don't even know where I'm going with that one. But on the production tab, you do see that there is not only the Raven right now for Bombagor. Um, there's a number of resources right now. You probably want to be looking at a few more ground units. But the missile turret view and a couple more refineries are just popping out the second base. Saving up a little bit of money for the Corvid reactor is going to be the next piece that comes in. But now, here comes the Observer so that Helix is now finally going to come over here and take a look at not the front gate. Helix wants to go and make sure that there is a second base. Finds out that there's a missile turret. He's going to come over here. Finds out that there's another missile turret. And a raven. The reveal of the raven is not the best thing for to happen for Bombdegore, but really, it's also not the worst thing that could happen. Because I think Bombdegore is in a really good position here. The Raven and the Marine are still going to follow this guy around. I don't think they're going to be able to polish him off. His shields do regenerate pretty quick. Well, it's only 20 shields, so whatever. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, it does get that out. So, Helix does get a decent look at the base. Does see that there's an expansion. Does see that there are Ravens on the field, so it is pretty much a tech, uh, a tech crunch. Um, Helix, in the meantime, has made two forges. And is essentially working on, I believe, 2-2? Two, 1-1 two? One, one is on the way. Corvid Reactor and high sec Auto Tracking almost finished right now for Bombagor. Third Command Center on the way, which is uh, probably going to be placed up here, yeah, in the middle, and then just floated over. Knowing where his opponent is, I would expect Bombagor to go up over here. Do not predict things. Just try to report on what's happening. You are bad at predicting things and not very good at it. You are bad and not very good. It's a double whammy. So the Observer is still kind of making its way around here for Helix, trying to get a bit better of a look, just to make sure that there's no third. Because, really, Helix would probably want to move out with his units and have a peek to see if there is a third on the way. Helix taking his own third, actually. There. His. Does not scout this base to actually look and see. Ah, there. Now it goes. And... Really, when you're scouting... It's sometimes kind of handy, especially if you're looking for a third to bring your units with you. Because if you do see a vulnerable third, it would take a lot longer to run the whole way across the map 
than it would to just be, you know, right there. So the army supply is pretty heavy in Helix's land of things. There is, I'd say, I think they're at 1-1 one, one at the moment. Yep. Currently at 1-1. One, one. Uh, Bombadora is at 0-1, oh, I believe. But the rest of the... Upgrades are on their way. The Raven is getting a few upgrades as well. If you look at the Armory, is getting vehicle and ship plating. Hooray! There's a couple of Ravens all just kind of poking around, just keeping track of things. A little bit of a turtle terran, but not huge because there's no tanks. Uh, the factory is mostly just making, yep, a whole bunch of Hellbats. So it's all good for, for the Hellbats. Bob, of course, loading up the SCVs to take this third base. I wasn't expecting. Okay. Well... Yeah, all right, that one's protected by rock, so if you can do it, and yep, you load up your five dudes, then that is a good way to do it. Um, really kind of just waiting to see what is going to happen here. A couple more gates, because, oh, we're finally moving past four gates. At the 15-minute mark, he's getting more than four gates. Bob, of course, been doing pretty well for production tabs. He's getting two, uh, two more command centers on the way. There's a lot of ravens right now, so he's been focusing on a big number of uh, Raven production is managing to keep ahead of things with the, I was about to say this is supply depots coming in, but uh, two, uh, yep, number of simulators now, so just expanding on this third base the worker supply is still, well 50 is a lot, so I think Helix almost has too many of these Bombardor taking this base and it's going to be able to start protecting it, protecting it vis the missile turrets Still just kind of sitting here. The two armies sort of squaring off, staring at each other, but no, no, here we go. Helix's army has started moving out across the map. And it's thinking about... Thinking about doing a little bit of damage. There's uh, a number more gateways, so now just a few forward pylons, I think, but doesn't appear to be taking a probe with them is Helix. Helix, Helix, Helix. No one deciding to take the gold just yet. There's a planetary fortress right there for Bomb Decor. Uh, just taking, so each, both players on the three, three bases at the moment, um, probably, yeah, full on cooldown here for Helix. Helix is a little bit ahead insofar as supply, they both got a fair number of cash monies here are, and so these command centers, this will be one, and they're probably, one might be an orbital, but this forward one is definitely going to be a planetary fortress just for fair amount of defense. This observer is just kind of peeking at and just making sure that, oh, patrolling the gold so that no one takes the gold. Yeah, you wouldn't want to take the gold. You wouldn't want to be like four bases behind. Um, no, they're both going to be planetary fortresses, so I'm quite wrong. Uh, Bomb de Gore is really just on kind of protective mode, just trying to expand, get a little bit of a toehold on the remainder of the map. Neither of them really going for map supremacy at the moment. It's uh, pretty all quiet on the western front. Really, the only thing that Helix is doing is just watching one of the gold bases. I mean, it's possible he flew over the other one, but really, uh, now we're into just, it's, uh, so High Templar, a few DTs in there. Was, was there some DTs? I can't remember. Uh, did I see any DTs? No, it just seems to be High Templar and Zealot Archon, and I believe we're at 2-1-2. There's three, uh, Psionic Storm cloaking field for Banshees, I guess? Aha! There go a couple of Banshees there, to the Cloak Banshees, and this is going to be a the first forward pylon that we've really seen. These two observers are still just kind of wigging around. Uh, there's that one. Just they're stopping in the middle, so not really interested in looking to see what could be going on. Here are some... So the Banshees are coming down from the top side of things. Now the problem there is that the observer does see them. So he is getting a little bit ready, but he is, even though he does see a couple of Banshees, the Cloak Banshees coming in, but the, now the Ravens are going to move by, and they are just going to auto-turret auto their way through here. And at the same time, the army is still not fully interested in what is going on on the bottom. He's coming up here to try to... I don't even know. He sees this, and oh, he just left-clicked on it. He left-clicked on the base. Meantime, the, um, the auto-turrets are going to move, move their way in the... And, and, yep, so he did bring in a couple of stalkers, and he does have the observer, so he can see these cloak units. The problem is that the Ravens are just dropping a ridiculous ton of missing turrets down here. The army is trying to get through these rocks, as opposed to actually taking out this this base right here, which they could do. they got the charge lots, and nope, now we've totally forgotten about what we're doing entirely, and we're moved back to our main base, and we're trying to see if there's anything that we can do about this. Uh, those like, stalkers are already dead. Nope, they're trying to move their way back in. There is the... Uh, 
I'm excited to throw a lance. I'm trying to remember all the names for things on, on its way down there for the Colossus, which are not actually built, I don't think. But um, the Bombagor is able to try to repair this and so to get just another few kills. Only two kills? That's a small number of kills. So Bombagor does leave this base here. Not too too many storms at the at that particular token. But now up against two planetary fortresses and a few of the a few of the uh, ravens, there is a Hunter Seeker missile, a couple of Hunter Seekers are going to come down here, and that's going to take out a number, well, at least soften them up for the Planetary Fortress to get some work in. There's eight kills there for this Planetary Fortress, and that's going to do quite a bit of damage. Uh, the SCVs are able, trying to keep this one alive, there's a few more Hunter Seekers on the, on the way to the... Yeah, the, um, the missile turrets... Not really quite as useful here, but oh, that completely destroys the remainder of the of the army of Heliox, and Heliox has pretty much nothing left of his base here. These Banshees, two of the Banshees of the original, what was it, like three, five, something like that, number of, of them, and now really, if you look at the uh, production of Bombadour, he's still cranking out the, mar the Marines, the Ravens. Heliox has got his two stalkers right there, so if you look at the army supply, and if you look at the units lost, oh wait, there it is, um, yeah, units killed, workers killed, so the units killed is pretty high right now for Bombadour, and Helix is going to go and try and kind of lick his wounds, but the thing is there is, I think the point to this one is probably going to be Dark Templar moving in, I'm not sure if that actually ever happened, the missile turrets eventually did run out, yep, there they are, just kind of exploding and running out, there's one raven remaining here, and the remaining missile turrets are going to kill off this last stalker, and then they're just going to kind of run out of energy. But there are two command centers there, and I think, where's the giant mob of, aha, so there's the high energy ravens, and I think Bombagor's going to be ready for that as well, and he didn't even move out with his army whatsoever, he's got this entire field of hellbats. Uh, there it is, there's a Dark Templar on his way in, so he's just going to kill some SCVs. Who killed your probe there? Mm, might want to bring over the ravens, do something about this, but no, no, whatever you do, don't send in the Dark Templar to actually start doing things. There's the scan, so Bombardier does get off the scan, and Heliox manages to stay just outside of range. Helix with an amazing amount. Oh, and the Planetary Force is going to kill these before they can get to that missile turret. Yep, the Dark Templar did not. Uh, the Dark Templar play did not did not work out in Heliox's favor. I was gonna say Heliox does not really have the gas to support some Dark Templar play right now because having well no he's four three over there uh, didn't bother getting gas here he's probably yep still mining in that direction didn't bother putting this one back up even though he's got well not that much gas really remaining there here are the two Archons so he's prote protecting this one he's got three observers there for three banshees just in case because observers as you know have conical vision so they can only see in pretty much one degree of the spectrum at any one given time now here we go with the Hellions and Hellbat play the second play in the in Bombadour's little notebook. And they're just going to come in here and rain down blue fire. Ready for blue fire? Oh, you got to love blue fire. Meanwhile, up here, and blue fire time. Meanwhile, yep, and there's a Dark Templar. There's a couple of Dark Templars and a couple of uh, Zealots moving in there at the same time. These blue flames. Hellions are doing a fair amount of damage down there. Uh, another scan will take out that one Dark Templar and the remainder of all the units do take out the Zealots, but the problem there is that the scan is going to wear off these two Dark Tem Templar are going to be able to get through most of that army there, so Heliox has finally started using a lot of his ab abilities and at least advantages. The Dark Templar are slowly, well, slowly trying to keep this from being a complete steamroll, but the problem is I don't think Helios has really got anything behind it. Gathering all the gas and nothing else. Uh, this is going to wreck another bunch of probes and get a lot of damage there, but Lumber does get off the scan and so therefore does kill the Dark Templar. There's a couple more just there. So still, yeah, Helios is still trying to make sure that he can invest enough into this Dark Templar attempt. Four now, but the Hellbats do not have another scan on them, I don't think, unless uh, Bumble is trying to pay attention to get here. Uh, no, they're all getting pretty well killed, uh, but I think, yep, they do polish off the Nexus, and meantime, here come some more Ravens. So the Ravens really are the best play here. 
as they are the ones who are going to win this game probably. But going up against this number of Archons, I think there's a couple of, yep, the Hunter Seeker missiles are definitely going to take these out. And even getting a number of those Observers, you got three out of four of the Observers with one, with one shot, one poke there, and then the missile turrets coming in the back. Does lose a number of, of Ravens there, but the Hunter Seeker missiles are... Where that was headed. So that was, that was a really impressive split right there, actually, by Helix. So, where does Helix play for the rest of this game? He does seem a bit on the odd side, but it, yeah, Bombardier is definitely running away with this in the way of economy because the income of the, the, the gas production right now for Helix is just not going as well as he wants to. And I think the units on the board, does he still have, yeah, he's still just got the four Dark Templar, just not able to really create a more a diverse arm army, a diverse army. Diverse army enough to combat this Raven Hellbat uh, multiple pronged attack of just whatever Terran units that irritate people is a Bomb de Gore build. If you followed that sentence, good luck to you. Leave me a comment down below. Send me an email, ziggityzig@gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter at ziggityzig. Send me any kind of interesting, wild, wacky, crazy, in and prolific replays. Uh, email them to me, ziggityzig@gmail.com, and I will cast them here on Tales from the Ladder. Stay tuned.